guys, welcome back to the Kingdom Room. How y'all doing? What's poppin'? What's new? <laughs> um, seriously, what's new? What's going on with you guys? What are things that you're going through? Leave a comment down below. Welcome to the Kingdom Room. Please uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with a friend, do whatever so we can get the name of Jesus out there, okay? So, with that said, um, I just wanted to share what I've been going through as usual. And this week, the question of my week, the question of my mind, is who has my loyalty? Who does my loyalty belong to? And God has been working strictly with me and helping me to realize the importance of me serving Him above all things and above all mankind. Um, God helped me to understand this through understanding the story within Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, um, and helping me to understand that when, before Moses was born, the Pharaoh was trying to get rid of all of the baby boys because he, his, he felt his kingdom was threatened. And so he gave the midwives a command and he told the midwives to get rid of every baby boy that's born. And these two midwives decided to disobey Pharaoh and obey God. And I'm telling you, like, this story kept coming to me. Like, first off, I'm reading it as a de it comes up as a devotional on Wednesday. And then today I wake up and that's my devotional. And then I'm at church and the children's story is also on this story as well. So this is three different times that God is nudging me and helping me to realize that I cannot serve and I cannot have allegiance to anything and person, place, or thing. I think that's what I'll, I'll put it as. It's important that our loyalty belongs to God and we demonstrate that through our day-to-day -day decisions. Because you can imagine a midwife is at work, her boss calls her, and her boss says, this is what you're supposed to do. And in this day and age, if we don't stand for what God says, who are we? Like, how can we carry the Christian name, but we don't follow what he, what he does or says? You see what I'm saying? It's so contrary to God if we're not living out what he says. And we're so focused sometimes, like I find myself so focused on what would Jesus do? How would Jesus react? How would Jesus respond? But the part that we seem to miss sometimes is Jesus had full allegiance to his father before anybody. Before his earthly mother and his earthly father. Read Luke chapter 2. You'll see it. Everywhere in the scriptures, in the Gospels, you'll see Jesus consulted with his Heavenly Father and he looked for the approval of his Heavenly Father before anybody. Not even his earthly parents. Okay? And God just helped me to realize my loyalty and my obedience and my allegiance, it belongs to him and him alone. I'm not here to obey and do anybody's bidding. I'm here to do Jesus' bidding. That's it. That's why I'm here. That's why Jesus came. Jesus had a responsibility and a mission given to him by his father. And he and he obeyed. It's that simple. And how many of us, when we think about our lives, who are we obeying? Are we obeying culture? Are we obeying society and the standards and the norms? Are we who are we obeying? Who? Yo, who? That's the that's the thing. There's so many who's in this world, yo. It's so many of them. Which one are we are we listening to? And personally, guys, I I just don't want to get to the place where God has to look at me and he's jealous of my allegiance or he's jealous of my heart because my heart is is just everywhere. I I gave it to everybody. And God tells you not to cast your pearls against swine. You have to guard your heart. Because he's the only one that that's supposed to possess your heart. Having possession of somebody's heart means that that person 
if we studied my Bible study group, we studied Second Corinthians chapter five, where it says love controls, love controls everything that we do, meaning God, Christ controls everything that we do. We live in that when we obey. And that means that God has full possession of our hearts of our minds and of our souls mark chapter 12 love the lord your god with all of your heart all of your soul and all of your mind before you love people he tells you to love god first we have to love god and who will we obey who are we listening to who that's the big question who is it and I think about Matthew 6, 24, which says, No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one. That's a strong word. You will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to anything else. The thing says be enslaved to money. And think about it. A lot of us were enslaved to jobs, careers, bosses, people, success, influences, followers. Based off of how we look, that's what's so important. We're enslaved to those things, but we're not enslaved to God. And God, the crazy thing is that verse doesn't say, be enslaved to me. He says, serve me. God ain't even looking for us to be his slaves. He wants you to be his servant. Work for him. Work with him. I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I don't want anything in this life to pressure me, to making me feel as though that me and God are not on the same page. And to be away from God, that's a painful, to me, it's devastating because I know that God, above all things, God is the only thing that fulfills me. He's the only thing that satisfies me. He's the only thing that gives me peace, joy, love, contentment. And anything outside of that, man. And honestly, any decision, anything, any place, any person that God does not want for me, I don't want it. That is my heart. I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm not trying to look like a, 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 a heartless individual. I'm just too busy chasing after Jesus. And whatever he wants, I want. And God knows my heart. And he knows when I get to the kingdom, my goal is that he'll tell me, well done. You did what I told you to do. You didn't listen to other people. You listened to me. So guys, I pray that this is something that you think about. Who has your heart? Have we forgotten our first love? Who is our first love? Who is our source? Who is our provider? Who is our everything? I pray today that that's Jesus for you. Bye, guys.